Kia ora guys, Michelle here. Today I want to talk to you about the four main ways that I am preparing for my through hike of the Te Araroa Trail in 2019-2020. Okay, so the first way that I am preparing for my through hike of the Te Araroa Trail in the 2019-2020 season is to start purchasing some of the gear that I am going to need for that through hike. Now I should mention I am a little under a year away from starting my through hike but I thought that um, more preparation in this instance is probably better than less. Um, I would say that it's not necessary for you to start preparing as early as I am um, but because of my anxiety issues and um, some other bits and pieces like the fact that I've never really hiked or um, stayed outside uh, on trail by myself before I have decided to start this process a little bit earlier for myself. So the main gear items that I am purchasing at present are my big three. Now for those of you out there who don't know what that is, basically those are the three main items that I'm going to need for my through hike. Now that is my pack, my tent and also my sleeping setup. Now my sleeping setup actually includes two items of gear, that will be my sleeping bag and a sleeping pad. Luckily I have pretty much sorted out all of my big three items already. Um, with my pack I've gone for the Z-Packs Arc Haul. I did consider going with something like an Osprey pack um, because I do use Osprey packs. Um, in fact my Osprey Daylight Plus is arguably my favourite day hike pack at the moment. Um, but for the through hike scenario I just wanted to get my pack weight down as light as possible because I know that carrying extra weight on my back is going to be a huge problem for me. It's actually very durable for what it is. On top of that it's a one compartment pack so I can just easily stuff everything down inside that which suits me just fine um, and it's pretty much waterproof. I think technically it's water resistant um, but I'm pretty confident that it's not going to hold as much water as a standard Osprey type pack would hold. Now after my backpack the next major thing for me is going to be my sleeping setup and again I've actually managed to secure uh, one of my items in that regard too and that is my sleeping bag. So if you've been watching this channel for a little while you'll know that I recently did a review of my brand new sleeping bag which is my Enlightened Equipment Enigma. I say bag but it's actually a quilt so it's got an enclosed foot box um, but actually the back of the bag can open right the way out and you can cinch it back up with some little poppers um, but mainly it's uh, sort of a quilt slash bag hybrid. It's filled with a sufficient amount of down that I'm comfortable it's going to be well equipped for me for those colder temperatures that we tend to get in New Zealand. Um, so it is a 10 degree bag and I'm very happy with that choice. I haven't had the opportunity to test it out in very cold conditions just yet um, but I am looking forward to getting a chance over the summer to test it out in our summer conditions. Now as far as the sleeping pad goes, um, I actually don't have that yet but I am pretty confident that I'm going to go with the Thermarest Neo Air X Lite for women. Now the Thermarest stuff is um, widely known in the backpacking and hiking community. Um, I've read very good things about it. I've been following a lot of people who do use the Thermarest sleeping pads. At the moment I currently have a very cheap foam pad that I bought from a shop called Torpedo 7 here in New Zealand. I haven't even had a chance to test it out yet but I'm pretty confident that because I'm a side sleeper or a tummy sleeper that that sort of a foam pad is not going to be as comfortable as it could be for me here. So the main item that I haven't sorted out yet is my tent and there are a few options that I've been considering. If money wasn't an issue then I would probably be going with the Z-Pax Duplex Tent. Um, again I've heard some really great reviews about it. Um, it looks very durable, it looks very lightweight, it looks very packable and I think um, it would just be a really great option for me. Unfortunately despite the fact that it's only about 700 US dollars which is still a lot of money it's still probably going to cost me two to three times that to actually land it here in New Zealand. 
So that sort of forced me to look at some other options and at the moment I am tending towards one of the Big Agnes tents. Um, I've been tossing up between possibly a copper spur and also a tiger wall, the two person versions of those tents. That will allow me the same flexibility as the Z-Pax duplex does and maybe being able to have another person in the tent with me if a member of my family or one of my friends does want to tag along with me on a particular section. Um, but also allows me to have enough room in the tent to still store my pack inside as well. They also seem to be quite durable tents and they are trail tested as well. So um, there are a lot of hikers I've, I've noticed on the Te Araroa this year and also a lot of hikers who hike the US trails who are using the Big Agnes products and they are about um, from what I can see the best option you've got for the price and also for the weight. Okay so the second major way that I am preparing for my Te Araroa through hike um, is going to be to start doing some much longer day hikes. Now I've already gotten quite a few of these under my belt um, that includes doing the K2K or Kinloch to Kawakawa Bay track a few weeks back and I also previously have hiked the W2K which is the Fakaipo Bay to Kinloch track. Um, that track is slightly longer, it comes in at about 23 kilometers in length and can be done in a day um, but I, I didn't video it so my intention this summer is to get out and hike that pack again this time with my Z-Pax Art Hall just to test the weight over that longer distance. In addition to that I have a couple of other longer day hikes in mind. One of those is the Tarawera Trail which is accessible from Rotorua um, from Lake Tarawera. That trail is about 15 kilometers long and it says it takes around five to six hours to complete. Now I can do it one way and stay at a campsite at the other end or I can hike the whole thing in one day and then actually arrange to catch a boat at the other end to bring me back to the car park on the lake. Outside of that the other main day hike that I am planning to complete over the summer is the Tongariro Crossing. This time hopefully with all of my family not just my mum and we're also thinking about doing it in the reverse direction. Now for us reverse means going from the Ketitahi hut end to the Mangatapopo car park end and that is mainly fueled by um, my desire to hike the TA Sobo which is southbound and if I'm doing it that way then it means that that is the direction in which I'm going to have to hike the crossing. Um, my main reason for uh, wanting to do it right now is to get me over any anxiety I might have about ascending a very steep gravel slope to get to Red Crater with a heavy pack on. Now there are a lot of reasons why I do want to complete a few long hikes before I commit to through hiking the TA in 2019-2020. One of those is my own um, insecurities about stamina um, and also my insecurities about carrying that sort of weight on my back for an extended period of time. Um, but also I have a lot of insecurities about um, spending that much time outside in nature by myself. So the third main way that I will be preparing for my Te Araroa through hike is going to be to hike some overnight trails. Now of course this is recommended for anybody who's planning to do a through hike. You probably should have a go at at least spending a night or two or three in the outdoors before you decide to go and hike a long trail. That's not to say that you can't do it if you've never done it before but certainly for me I like to make sure I can get those unknowns known before I go. Now I've got a few ideas about some of these hikes. Um, one of the ones that I do want to complete is the Lake Waikari Moana Great Walk and that is probably the top one on my list at the moment. It's a 46 kilometer hike um, which should take in the region of three to four days to complete and actually it's located pretty close to where I am here in New Zealand. So it's convenient in a lot of respects. Um, it's also one that my mum wouldn't mind completing as well. So if I can, I'm gonna try and tee up the first time to go with her. Um, but if not, I'll hike it and then we might give it a go together at some point again in the future. After Waikari Moana, there's a lot of other options. Um, closest, or next closest to me would be the Round the Mountain track in the Tongariro National Park. Um, and part of it includes the Tongariro Crossing as well. It's a 66 kilometer round trip and usually you have to allow about four to six days to complete it. Okay so the fourth and last way that I am preparing for my Te Araroa through hike is to upskill myself. Now arguably this is the most important aspect of preparation that you can embark upon. Um, so far I've managed to do one of the three things that I'm actually looking to do in order to upskill myself and that is to go on a river safety course. I recently completed one at the Karangahaki Gorge with Outdoor Training New Zealand. It was a fantastic course 
course um, I was actually really surprised at the amount of knowledge that I gained just in one day um, and also the amount of respect that I gained for things like rivers and fast flowing bodies of water. The other courses that I have my eye on are um, some bushcraft courses and also probably most importantly a navigation course. Chances are that I'm going to be taking with me uh, something like a Garmin Imreach, um, I'm not sure exactly what yet, as well as my paper maps. Um, but I just want to make sure that if I do get really caught out that I actually still can read a map. Okay guys, so those are the four main ways that I'm preparing for my Te Araroa through hike. I hope that you found them helpful and um, potentially they might have even inspired you to get out there and, and do some of the same preparation for yourself. Uh, it's never too early to start preparing, that's always been my mantra. Now there's a whole bunch of other stuff that I could really go into here, but if there's anything specifically that you'd like to know, please feel free to go ahead and leave me a comment down below. I'm always happy to discuss this sort of stuff. And if you've got any suggestions for me, then I'm always happy to hear those as well. If you haven't had a chance yet, why don't you go and check out my Facebook page and also my Instagram page. I've been posting a lot of photos over there on some of the hikes that I've been completing just recently and there will be more to come as the summer months progress. Okay guys, I hope that was helpful for you and I will see you in my next video.